Modern-day research in regards to UFOs occasionally gives reference to portals, or as our ancestors referred to them, as stargates. It's speculated that these doorways are utilized by extraterrestrials from other realities. Einstein's theory of relativity theoretically established the possibility of collapsing and connecting two regions of space-time in order to create a wormhole that would enable us to travel between vast distances up to 10 times faster than the speed of light. That was the general idea. From this perspective, the possible existence of stargate portals in ancient worlds become a matter of technology rather than a superstition or even a mythology. As a result, it's been suggested that the astronomical alignment of placement of certain ancient sites understood in the context of ancient religious beliefs are the people of the time that may raise the possibility that certain ancient sites served as some type of stargate portals. But what were they used for? It was once just a theory that UFOs were somehow the utilizing key locations to these earth or doorways. And of course, these locations now in the 21st century are considered more theory than they are mysterious myths or legends. There is some evidence to support them. One of the most talked about doorways is that of the Heyumaca in Peru, or better known as the Gate of the Gods, discovered by Jose Luis Delgado Mamani in 1996 while attempting to learn more about the location due to him taking a job as a tour guide. The mysterious location is described by native tribes as an active gateway to the land of the gods. Once Mamani was told of this, his dreams were invaded for many years of this doorway. He dreamt that the pathway leading up to the huge doorway was made from what he could describe a pink-colored marble-type stone and that within the large door, a much smaller one would open with a brilliant blue light surrounding it and within a shimmering light. Interestingly enough, the huge doorway actually consists of two in a T-shape, the largest measuring an impressive 22 foot by 22 foot square, with the smaller one within its center measuring six and a half feet in height. The carving is set within a huge rock that is strangely crisscrossed with unusual straight gouges that almost look like machine marks. The native tribesmen informed Mamani that the larger doorway was used by the gods themselves and the smaller one used by us mortals. Also that the gods were giants and on occasion mortal humans could become immortal themselves if the gods wished it so. Only those thought to be courageous and honorable were granted to live amongst the gods. Legends speak of one such mortal. During the 16th century, at the time when the Spanish arrived in Peru to loot Inca riches, a high Incan priest by the name Amaru Maru fled the temple with his golden sun disc, a treasure that was revered by many that had been named the Key of the Gods of the Seven Rays. Amaru discovered the gate of the gods at Heyumaka and saw that the doorway was guarded by several shaman priests. Once he presented them the sun disc, the shaman conducted a ritual consisting of meditation and chanting, which after a short time, Amaru started to feel a pressure build in his ears. Then suddenly there was a bright flash emanating from the gateway. He turned to see the smaller doorway open and beyond a shimmering light. Leaving the sun disc behind, he was able to pass through the doorway and onto another reality, a reality the shamans knew as the land of the gods. The Gate of the Gods has been, at some time in the distant past, carved out of a natural rock face. The huge mysterious door-like structure lies in the Hayumaku Mountains region of South Peru near Lake Titicaca, about 35 kilometers from the city of Puno. This location has long been revered by local Indians, you could say, as the City of the Gods, although no actual city has ever been discovered there. The area is known as the Stone Forest and consists of strange rock formations and which, they have to, I have to say, they do resemble buildings, people and other artificial structures. Though officially the location of the Gate of the Gods is said to be an ancient Inca site, it's clearly not. Those that have lived there for a long, long time, the many generations of them, claim that they what they actually found, our ancestors found this, and that it wasn't constructed by the Inca. 
Whoever built the Gate of the Gods is a complete mystery, and we can only say for sure that it's most certainly pre-Incan, and of course the location must have been of great importance. Investigators and researchers visiting the location discovered an interesting indentation in the rock on the right-hand column of the smaller doorway. On close examination, they found that a slim disc object could in fact be inserted into the indentation to be held there by the surrounding rock. Was this some sort of keyhole to the door? If so, then Amaru's sun disc may have been appropriately named. Some visiting the location have managed to capture strange energy emanating from the doorway. According to information, several years ago, two researchers visiting the gateway conducted a number of acoustic experiments that led to one of the researchers vanishing for over 20 minutes. His colleague and fellow researcher couldn't find him anywhere. A short time later, the researcher turned to suddenly find his colleague was back. He looked pale and confused, almost nauseous. When asked where he had been, he replied, I never want to speak of it. And as the years passed, he never did, nor ever visit the location again. In 2007, while searching for the remains of shipwrecks, scientists discovered a stone structure 12 meters or 40 feet below the surface of Lake Michigan, thought to be around about 9,000 years old. The structure has been dubbed Michigan's equivalent of Stonehenge. While a lot of mainstream scientists are skeptical about the age of the site, and if it's even any relevance whatsoever, many believe that it is in fact some type of stargate or wormhole. The site has also claimed several bizarre disappearances and gained the title The Michigan Triangle. There have also been numerous UFO sightings over the lake and in the same vicinity as well as a handful of USO objects reported sightings of things under the water. There are many locations of like that around the world, and they are thought to represent ancient stargates or portals. Some look almost identical to the Gate of the Gods in Peru, and are just as much a mystery. We don't know what they are, we don't know who built them, and is there anything special about them? Are they really portals? The Gate of the Gods is almost identical to the carved portal of Yazilakela found in Turkey and shares the very same legends in regards to it acting as a doorway between worlds. It's also interesting to point out that considerable UFO activity is witnessed by the local natives of Peru many times and that they believe them to be the chariots of the gods, a very suitable name we may recognize thanks to the investigative researcher and author Eric von Daniken. What is interesting is that we are finding correlations between the UFO phenomena and ancient sites, some of which are, are being referred to as locations where uh, the ancients had stargates or portals, doorways to other realities. Um, and they are sometimes represented in temples or uh, underground structures. It, they are very unusual. And, and of course, there are several of these uh, throughout Europe but many around the world, especially throughout South America. However, do, is there certain measurable evidence of these things that exist? Can we measure them? Do we, these, what real tangible evidence do we have? Well, it would seem when the manifestation of these objects that are appearing in those locations seem to leave some type of residue behind. And that is measurable. There seems to be an effect in a, a, what we might refer to as a, a gravitational well. And they can be measured by specialized equipment such as time displacement meters. You can also see visually see the effects of this anomaly, usually lasting anything up to 48 hours after the initial event of lasers being set up and of course you start to see a bend in the laser line as like a very similar to pulling a, a bow uh, a string of a bow it's causing this uh, laser to bend what we tend to do is set them up on a target a large target and we can sometimes see the drift off the target indicating something gravitational magnetic gravity is pulling backwards and forwards on the light because not even light can escape gravitational waves. This phenomenon tends to be only short-lived of course but it is being measured and there are also other things that have been measured at those ancient sites where these so-called doorways are supposed to exist and that is minute areas 
of voltage appearing from literally nowhere. Tests carried out in Ireland you know, during the summer solstice 2019 on several locations produced up to 300 millivolts. Uh, enough to light small lights, to be honest with the LEDs and things. We don't know where that's coming from, but it was there and it was generated during the time of the solstice. Um, we still got a lot to learn about these ancient locations and the energies that upwell from there at certain given times. Is, so maybe the phenomenon is somehow drawn to those locations or our ancestors built these locations in those areas because they knew they existed. One thing is for sure, there definitely seems to be some, some connection between UFOs, portals and doorways and ancient sites. And of course, we're gonna have to try and unravel the mystery, the connections between these, loca these locations to try and figure out what's going on. Are they some type of doorway? There are people that claim to have had certain experiences where they seem to have disappeared into other realities. Uh, we don't know. One thing we do know though, is that they are measurable and be it sound, light, frequencies, even effects, gravitational wells. Uh, these are all measurable things that we can use with modern day technology. We just need to get out there and try and find out more answers, to be honest with you. Seven and a half thousand miles from Peru lies the site of Abu Ghorab in Egypt, another location steeped in myth and mystery. Said to be one of the oldest of ancient sites on the planet, Abu Ghorab sits on top of an alabaster platform better known as Egyptian crystal and rumored to be attuned to the Earth's frequency of 7.8 hertz. It's theorized that this low frequency can enhance human senses of communication and align human consciousness with sacred energies. Just as in Heyu Marka in Peru, Abu Ghorab is thought to be the location of another doorway to the beyond. Interesting discoveries in acoustic research and light frequency tests are actually being carried out. If we look at the three pyramids of the Giza Plateau, there is one pyramid where it's said to be incomplete inside. However, when acoustic tests were carried out in, in these locations, they found that they all generated the same frequency, which basically means that they were all acoustically designed. And when they reached a certain frequency, maybe that is when they put tools down. We don't know. Is it really incomplete? Would completing that pyramid inside change the frequency? We don't know, but there may be resonant chambers throughout the Egyptian pyramids, as there are resonant chambers around other ancient sites around the world. There seems to be some connection between uh, acoustics in, in these locations and some type of doorway phenomena is taking place. Also, terahertz frequency light is another thing. When light coming from the sun, that sunset and sunrise, which generates a around about, I believe, a 450, 460 terahertz frequency, it comes into that chamber. And again, it's seemingly something is taking place. What is it? Why was it so special to our ancient uh, ancestors that light on the solstices and equinox passed into these resonant chambers? Something was certainly going on. Is it a combination of light frequency and sound frequency, which is activating something? It has been theorized that uh, the possibility of people being in these resonant chambers, which are designed, some are designed at 11, uh, sorry, 111 hertz, 110 hertz, the healing frequencies, we could say. Is there something going on in there when providing this acoustic and uh, frequency, and of course, allowing this light to come in at the same time? A lot more research is, is certainly required, but um, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting that we are slowly but surely chiseling away and trying to find answers about what our ancient civilizations left behind and what were they were doing and why they were using, like, utilizing these locations. Egyptian legends speak of their communications and travel between the worlds of mortals and gods almost mirroring the legends of the Cherokee Native Americans who talk of formless thought beings who travel on a wave of sound from their home world in the Pleiades star system. As well as Abu Ghorab being referred to as some kind of stargate, there are also signs of what some would perceive to be advanced technology having been used to create the site. Precise circular holes have somehow been drilled into the alabaster. 
Abu Ghurab is part of the pyramid complex at Abu Sur and considered by the Egyptian people as one of the oldest ceremonial centers on the planet. Egyptologists state that Abu Ghurab was constructed by the Egyptian 5th dynasty. However, ancient Kemetian oral tradition says Abu Ghurab was already ancient by the time of the 5th dynasty. Such problems in aging leaves Abu Ghurab a mystery as to who and why it was created. Stones consisting of colossal red granite blocks, each weighing several tons, have been cut with precision, polished and placed as facing stones to a pyramid which once stood in the location. The stones are laid with such accuracy that it's extraordinary. The casing stones to the pyramid, for some unknown reason, are scattered around like Lego blocks, as if a huge hand had swatted it like a sandcastle. At the center of the site stands an alabaster mound, with the remains of an obelisk atop it, designed in such a way that it represents the four cardinal directions of north, east, south and west. The vibrations transmitted through the alabaster and the other surrounding materials are said to create a doorway in which the gods manifested. Probably one of the strangest discoveries at Abu Ghorab is the huge giant square alabaster dishes that have strange gear-like designs carved out on top of them. It's assumed that these massive basins were designed to hold the blood of sacrificed animals, which allegedly ran through the perfectly round channels cut into the surrounding paving. However, this does not make any sense, as the suspected drain holes are situated near the rim of the basin and not the bottom. However, when analysis of the area was carried out, there was not a single drop of DNA or any other form of evidence to support this misconception. What is known is that the basins are incredibly smooth inside and show signs of them being cut out using some kind of circular tool, suggesting that whoever manufactured them did so using an unidentifiable technology. Local farmers and guides have reported seeing strange lights from the area, a blue glow that can be seen occasionally in the dark of the desert, emanating from the location, sometimes accompanied with an unusual humming sound. Carved on a massive piece of stone wall, and mostly hidden between boulders and cave systems in a place known as, if I can say this right, Ranmasu Ural, is what is believed to be a star map, or a star chart in fact. The symbols carved on the rock are said to be some type of code that opens the stargate and allows the opener to travel from this world to other areas throughout the universe. Directly opposite the star map are four stone seats, or you could say chairs. In many ancient Native American legends, stargates or portals were represented by rotating circles. Similar star maps have also been found in other ancient sites said to be stargates, and some stone doorways are also to believed to be portals, such as the one found in Bolivia. In western Bolivia, at an altitude of 13,000 feet, stands the ancient city of Tiwanaku, which was once the capital of an empire that extended into present-day Peru and Chile, which flourished from 300 to 1000 AD and is believed by many historians to be one of the most significant cities of the ancient Americas. According to the legend, this location was the cradle of the first humans on planet Earth, created by the sun god Lord Viracocha. It is unknown as to how old exactly Tiwanaku is. Some researchers believe the city could in fact date back to 14,000 years BC. The most significant ruin of Tiwanaku is the ancient portal known as the Gate of the Sun, a doorway constructed from a single andesite block, cut with machine precision, weighing approximately 12 tons and around 9.8 feet in height and 13 foot. When the Gate of the Sun was rediscovered by European explorers during the mid-19th century, the megalith had a large crack passing through it and was lying horizontally on the ground. Though it stands in the same location it was discovered, it is believed that this is not its original location. Like the Gate of the Gods at Hayamaka, the Gate of the Sun is believed to be a doorway to the land of the gods. Many researchers believe the purpose of the gate is somehow connected astronomically. At the top of the arch is a carving of a winged figure, assuming to be that of the Sun God with rays of light emanating from behind his head and holding two large staffs. The construction of the gate is an incredible feat of engineering using precision mathematics that leaves modern man perplexed in regards to how our ancestors knew of such scientists and technology.
So what do portals and stargates represent? Well, the, the theory is, is that they're actually another reality to the realm of the gods, whatever that be. I mean, what is the realm of the gods? I mean, we could say that it's the star people from ancient days that descended from the stars, um, or descended from the skies to teach us language and uh, agriculture and, and so on and so forth. We don't really know. Um, it seems though that a lot of these ancient civilizations around the planet, around about the same time, were worshipping serpent gods for some reason. And it also seemed that it, their, their civilizations abruptly ended, as uh, such as cities were just abandoned overnight, literally. And we don't know where they went. We don't know what happened to them. But what was left behind were locations which are said to be stargates or portals to other realities. People visiting these locations have reported strange lights in the skies, um, unusual humming sounds, and lights and flashes coming from stones. What is going on there? Is it these new, these unusual energies that are appearing there, or is there some type of phenomena that's taking place there? We don't have all the answers, but what we can say is that the, the ancient ancestors may have been communicating with something else, be it the gods, be it uh, some beings from another reality, or extraterrestrials even. We, we just, we, we don't have all the answers. But well, they seemingly were. I mean, the civilizations all over the world were doing pretty much the same thing at around the same time, which is interesting because, you know, we generally thought initially when we read science books that, you know, we didn't know the earth was round. We wasn't tra traveling backwards and forwards across the Pacific or Atlantic. I guarantee that is just a complete utter rubbish. We have to give credit, more credit, to our ancient ancestors, really. I mean, they, they, they achieved so many amazing things that we, we just don't know how to get our heads around even today. One thing is for sure, they were certainly very different than you and me. Surrounding the sun god are 48 carved depictions of what look to be bird-like humans said to be the messengers of God. Similar to the depictions of the bird-like humans found in Sumerian carvings throughout Mesopotamia. The Peruvian people believe that the doorway becomes active at certain times and is seen as a shimmering light of blue. Stepping through it will take those to the mystical land of the gods. There are many places throughout the world considered to be stargates, doorways or portals, all of which seem to be connected with ancient sites around the world and even ancient burial tombs found in the United Kingdom and Ireland. The Hippogeum in Malta is one such location an underground prehistoric burial site that was discovered in 1902. This complex made up of interconnecting rock-cut chambers has three distinct levels, thought to be five and a half thousand years old, one of which is a resonance chamber referred to as the Oracle. The alcoves serve as a location where shaman or priest would sit while performing a certain chant that creates a frequency of 111 hertz, the chamber has been specifically built to resonate at that frequency, thus focusing the sound at the central point of the room. Scientists have confirmed that if sitting in this central location of the residence chamber, the subject will become affected by the 111 Hz. MRI scans have shown that when immersed in the sound of 111 Hz, the brain switches off the prefrontal cortex and deactivates the language center that is responsible for holistic processing, creativity, and intuition. This reaction can result in a form of meditation considered to be divine and induce a trance-like state that some believe allows you to become connected with the gods by opening a doorway to another reality, a practice that seems to yet again mirror those carried out in other ancient sites around the world. The location of the hypogeum in Malta is cloaked in mystery. Though many of the deep caverns were once associated with supernatural practices, there have been also some, a number of strange disappearances, you could say, some of which include explorers, uh, geologists, and even a class of students. What is interesting, though, that many years have passed since a lot of these reports, and occasionally, just occasionally, visitors report hearing the voices of students or other seemingly voices coming from empty caverns as being somehow beckoning visitors deeper and deeper within the labyrinth. 
You can visit the Hypergym. However, be prepared to be told that there is no filming, there is no photography, and there is even no audio recordings allowed. And of course, only small groups of 20, which are constantly overlooked by security officers. Why is this? And most importantly, what secret could be being kept from us? Another mystical location situated in Ireland is the New Grange Burial Mound. Like the Hypergeum, it's designed as a residence chamber attuned to 110 Hz. Again, priests would perform a chant that creates the 110 Hz, allowing those who are sat in the center of the chamber to experience an abrupt shift in their prefrontal cortex, resulting in a temporary switching from left to right-sided dominance in regards to the processing of emotion. This process would turn on an area of the brain that scientists in biobehavioral studies believe can change mood, enhance empathy and social behavior. Legends associated with the mound talk of passing through a doorway to the underworld, a mystical location known to be associated with the gods. Such ancient sites are often associated with reports of strange lights, UFOs and even time loss. Could it be that our ancestors were knowledgeable of other realities and how to possibly access them? There seems to be growing evidence in regards portals and multiple realities. Research carried out into the connections between ancient sites, UFOs and key locations have been undertaken and documented under the study name Project Doorway, which found evidence of phenomena at specific locations known as positive magnetic anomalies. This study also shows a correlation between the locations and UFOs, the paranormal, sightings of cryptids, and even strange disappearances. Slowly but surely, the evidence is pointing towards that such phenomena may have been right under our noses all this time. Not really out there, but right here and kind of right now, which can be a bit alarming. In the Smithsonian Magazine in 2011, Dr. Lisa Randall from Harvard University said, I believe an extra dimension may exist close to our familiar reality, hidden except for a bizarre sapping of the strength of gravity as we see it. Maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board and carry out extensive studies at these ancient sites with some of the best scientific equipment we can lay our hands on an attempt to get some real answers to a mystery that circumnavigates the globe. It seems that UFOs have a connection to energy locations around the planet. You could say it's the Earth's energy grid or uh, Lay's, for example. Now, if we look at Earth energy grids, the Earth energy grid, when looking at the, glo uh, the global map, will point out key locations where there's these upwellings of energy. And interestingly, these key locations are like the Giza Plateau in Easter Island and so on and so forth. It would seem our ancient ancestors may have known this somehow. They were more in tune. Now, the thing is, you know, when we talk about ancient past, we can dig up skeletons and bones and things like that, but they don't really tell us anything about that individual, that ancient individual. How were they communicating? I mean, spiritually, in consciousness. We can't measure that in, in bones. We, we really don't know. Something significantly must have been different with our, with our ancestors because they seemingly must have been in tune with natural energies around the earth and specific locations were built on key areas, uh, such as the earth side energy grid just as they've done throughout Europe when building certain places and, and churches and, and towers on lays. And it's also interesting is that about 35% of sightings that take place in the UK are reported on lays, um, very close to lays. Um, there's, there seems to be some correlation between energy and UFOs. You know, UFOs have been associated to um, electrical storms in the sky as well, and also been filmed on Na by NASA um, videos from space. And you know they've caught UFOs in cloud formations where uh, uh, electrical storms are taking place. Maybe they, they maybe they gravitate to it. Maybe there's some interest between these energy upwellings and the phenomena. Um, we can say for an absolute certainty 
that certain locations like Michu Picchu in Peru, these areas were very, very specific where they built these cities. The whole mountain of Machu Picchu is just one great big magnetic peak. And in fact, the very top of it is, uh, is what you might, is this, is this stone shape. It's literally like a square, and that's the actual peak of the mountain. And anybody going close by it with a compass, you'll see how magnetic that is. It's just spinning and spinning. This isn't by chance. The, the ancients built these locations on those sites for a particular reason. We just don't know why.